Welcome to 6.5 On The Roads, continuing coverage of Supercomputing 2024. I'm Dave Nicholson with 6.5 Media and the Futurum Group, and I've got a very special guest to talk about networking for AI, Matt Leibowitz from Dell Technologies. Matt, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So let's straight away talk about networking in the era of AI. Uh, we talk about artificial intelligence uh, coming out of supercomputing 2024. Of course, we're talking about high performance computing, supercomputing. By definition, that includes computation outside of a single server node, right? That's so right. by definition, networking is part of this. Uh, there, was a, there was a time when people said the network is the computer. I think for the sake of this conversation, we can think of it that way. Um, but what are you seeing in terms of customer challenges around networking today from the Dell perspective, specifically around AI? Yeah, the big thing is that networking for AI, as you, meant, you mentioned it actually, is pretty fundamentally different than the way you know, an enterprise data center would handle networking, where it's just like you described, you don't just have one server doing the work, you have dozens to hundreds of servers all clustered together with multiple GPUs in each server that have to handle the inflows of data, these large, what they call elephant flows of data, uh, and they have to be able to respond quickly, low latency, handle the high bandwidth. And, you know, I think customers, especially the large service providers and the large enterprises, this is just not something that they do every day. It's a networking technology and framework that they just don't work with that often. And so many of them are struggling to uh, make sure they can deliver the performance that AI needs to train models and do inferencing and, and ultimately deliver value. So let's double click on that just a little bit. When you, when you say it's different, um, can you give me kind of more specific examples of, of, of the differences between uh, tying together a bunch of general compute servers with CPUs in you know, what we've been doing for 20, 30 years? How does, they, how do, how does AI and all of these GPU clusters meaningfully change the equation? The, I would say the, the big two, or really we'll start with the first one, is the change in network technology. Most uh, enterprise organizations are not familiar with working with InfiniBand technology, for example, which if, you know, if they're doing high performance computing, they're already doing high frequency trading or drug research or something like that, they might be familiar with InfiniBand, but most are not. It works, it's, it works differently, the cabling is different, the protocols that it uses are different. So it's a, a new language they need to learn. And even if they want to use Ethernet, you're using 800 gigabit Ethernet with specialized switches and using RDMA over converged Ethernet to have direct memory access between these cluster nodes. Because it's, again, it's like you said, it's not just one server. You're not just tying one compute node together with another. You've got, say, a Dell XE9680 server with eight GPUs let's say you have dozens to hundreds of them in your data center, you have to cluster them all together so that from the applications perspective, that's one big server. But behind the scenes, all the data has to flow between those so that it remains performant and can deliver on the uh, application performance that the developers and consumers are looking for. So it's a pretty big sea change in how networking is handled in the data center. So you just brought up a great a great thing to follow up on. Um, you talk about InfiniBand and you talk about Ethernet. Uh, Dell has positioned itself pretty well in the market as kind of the Switzerland of AI solutions. Uh, in other words, hey, uh, oh, you want a blue one? Yeah, we have that. Oh, no, no, you want yellow? We have that too. But from a services standpoint, how do you engage customers and help them make those decisions? Um, I imagine that folks, especially if you're talking about uh, putting together hybrid cloud or on-premises solutions, a lot of them aren't just buying one XC9680 with, uh, with, 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 you know, with eight GPUs in. They might be buying a cluster. Therefore, they must be networked with a net new networking technology. And they have the question about InfiniBand versus, versus Ethernet. Um, what does it look like? What's the process look like when you work with customers and help them figure that out? We, yeah, so great question. We try to get in front of it before they make a large purchase because the networking is so critical to this. So we've launched a series of services, our design services for AI networking to try to get in front of that, help the customers under, well, first understand what are they trying to do? You know, what's the use case with AI that they're doing? Are they just doing, uh, you know, retrieval augmented generation or they're doing inferencing or are they actually training a large scale model? 
all of that will influence the networking decisions, especially how big the clusters are, how they're going to be interconnected. So those design services start with figuring out what are they going to do, what's their plans, and then we deliver an actual design that ultimately results in a bill of materials that says you want a blue one, you want a green one. This is what you actually should get if the outcome you're looking for is X. And so we can deliver that to them before they've made a purchase decision so that when they get all that equipment in place, they've got the right systems and it's going to perform the way that they need it to. But, but to be clear, the only dog you have in the hunt is the Dell dog. Uh, as far as you're concerned, if you can if you can create the solution based on Ethernet or InfiniBand, Ethernet, by the way, could come from uh, from Dell native Ethernet solutions or packaged Ethernet from uh, from from others. Mm -hmm. um, you you guys are you guys are agnostic or as agnostic as, as somebody can be in that space. Right. Yeah. So Dell has our solutions for Ethernet and, you know, we work with partners like NVIDIA to deliver and we actually work very closely with NVIDIA. Uh, to deliver our services on top of their equipment too. So if they're buying NVIDIA Quantum for InfiniBand, or if they're buying mm -hmm. Spectrum X for uh, 800 gigabit Ethernet, we can support that as well. Okay. But as you said, we have our own equipment too that we can with our power switch that we can help them with. Got it. Got it. Okay. And so it's interesting when you you talk about going in and discovering what the use case is. I imagine. Well, I know for a fact that some of those conversations today start with you being consultative and asking the question, you know, what is the use case we're trying to solve here? And frankly, a lot of CIOs and CTOs are looking back across the table at you and saying, you tell me, Matt, <laughs> we're trying right. to figure, my board just asked my CEO who then immediately called me and asked, what am I, how am I gonna get ROI, positive ROI out of this AI thing? Uh, how much does networking choice factor into that quest for positive ROI out of AI. It's got to be it's got to be a meaningful cost contributor at some point when you're building these things out. It's it's not small. It's all about time to value. You know, I think we see we saw and we still see with our backlog a mad scramble to acquire this equipment. I think your point is they're acquiring it maybe without a use case in mind. That that does happen. The networking plays such a key role because, again, it really depends on what they're going to do. If they're looking start to start small with a small proof of concept, you know, a handful of servers, the networking they choose, while important, is less impactful. For the large scale enterprises or the ones that are, you know, what we would consider cloud service providers or CSPs, they're buying hundreds of these things. The networking is critical. If you get it wrong, the time to value will increase significantly. It will take longer to train models. The users, the consumers of the AI will have performance issues and they just won't get the value out of it. So that's why when they say, well, what, what should we do with this? How can you help us? We have services to help them with use case definition and figure out what they want to do with it. But we have to start with the infrastructure. If we don't get the networking right. The whole thing's not going to perform the way it should. We sort of gloss past some things, you know, those of us in, in, in this business will toss out the numbers, the hero numbers for things that are going on. But just to put this in perspective, um, I, I get excited when I walk into Home Depot and I see that you, you can get a 10-100 switch for 20 bucks. Uh, that gives me, gives, me all the, gives me all the bandwidth I need at home. But, but repeat what those, uh, you know, sort of state-of-the-art specs are. Uh, that we're dealing with from an InfiniBand and or an Ethernet perspective, and then what is sort of publicly acknowledged as the next thing that's coming? Where are we in that in that in that progression? We have to talk about you buying networking equipment at Home Depot, but that's for a later conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, the state of the art is is 800 gigabit, whether we're talking about InfiniBand or Ethernet. Uh, What's coming next, you, you know, even at Dell Tech World, Broadcom was on stage talking about how 1.6 and 3.2 uh, right. you know, terabits, not far, not far away. We're not talking about, you know, 20 years into the future. We are talking years into the future, a handful of years into the future. But state of the art today, 800 gigabit. Many customers that are going with AI today are choosing InfiniBand. That's sort of the, the standard. But as you see the, the rise in 800 gig Ethernet, the rise in technologies like RDMA over converge Ethernet, so you can have that high performance memory to memory transfer between these cluster nodes, but doing it over Ethernet, I think you're going to see that grow more. The other thing I'll say is, you know, most organizations are pretty familiar with Ethernet. 
So their comfort zone is likely to be, I want to stick with the thing I know, which is Ethernet. So I think we're going to see that. I think we're, you know, 800 gigabit today, but again, a couple of years in the future, I think 1.6 terabit is not too far behind, not too far away. Terabit. We'll find it at Home Depot though. Terabit, say it with me. Isn't that incredible? Listen, I, I turn... remember when one, one megabit was fast. I mean, look at me. You know, yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Remember when we had one megabit and then 10 megabit was fast ether, 100 megabit was fast ethernet. It's a, it doesn't exactly. go down. And right? just to be clear, I just, I only have hair in the front. Just to be clear. <laughs> I have no so I'm, I'm, I'm right. I'm right there with you. Um, and and if you ever get a chance to see, you know, those tomahawk chips, I think I think are the the Broadcom mm -hmm. ones in particular. Um, you look at the little nubs that that 800 gig traffic is going through, and it's mind boggling. It's sort of entering the quantum realm. But let's make, let's get back to this idea of services. Um, you know, we we know Dell as a company that provides all of the, um, whatever the generic word for Lego bricks might be, all of those building blocks that you yeah. can assemble in a variety of different ways and create rack scale solutions for people that include the networking. But you, uh, you, you talked a little bit about the services that are involved and in going in and doing the original consultation, but maybe walk me through that in a little more depth. What do, what do we get from Dell services? Why would I... Why wouldn't I just want to buy Dell hardware and then find somebody else to do the services for me? It's kind of a silly question, but yeah. yeah well, I mean, look again. Our, our services are differentiated in that in that way. Uh, to to walk through how we do it, you know, we start with our design services for AI networking, give them a framework and a design for what they need based on their use cases, and then we move forward when they purchase the equipment, not just the servers, but the networking and the interconnects. We can help them with the actual physical installation of that equipment in their data centers, the cabling. I don't know if you've ever been in one of these large scale AI data centers. It is a joy to see the, the bundled cables as they move between racks and above racks. It's, it's actually quite a sight, but all that takes planning. The cables you know, can't be bent beyond a certain radius or you're gonna have uh, performance problems. So you need to have that installed professionally by people that know what they're doing. And so we can help them with all of that. And then it's not just get it installed, do we have blinky lights? That's not enough. We do a deep testing. One, obviously one, just make sure nothing's gonna fail. If equipment's gonna fail, it's gonna fail during stress tests in the very beginning, but it's more than that, it's the performance. We wanna make sure your GPU scale networking is going to perform the way we expect it to. And so we run benchmarks uh, in concert with NVIDIA's engineering team. We've worked with them to have these networking benchmarks so that we can see uh, from the very beginning, before this gets deployed into production, is it going to be performant? Is it going to meet the use cases that the customer wants? And then ultimately, once all that is done, we can hand it over to them. So we want to do more than just help them buy the equipment. We want to help them design it, get it installed, tested, and then pushed into production so they can start getting value quickly. I think it's pretty well accepted that the leading edge of AI technology is uh, is straining what's possible with air only cooling. So, uh, you know, a lot of solutions moving forward, uh, direct liquid, there are even, there are even examples of bespoke data centers where they're immersing boards in oil. Yep. Uh, but the, but the standard that are, that's emerging seems to be kind of a water glycol mix of direct liquid cooling. And we think about that for the CPUs or the GPUs, but um, your equipment is living in those racks too. So, what is the um, what are the what are the things you have to think about, or are there any considerations when it comes to heat dissipation and thermal density and all of that from the networking engineer's perspective? I mean, this, yeah. So, liquid cooling, I think, is the future for AI, regardless, uh, because these things are not going to become less power hungry in the future. They will only become more. Uh, in terms of networking, you know, you, you kind of laugh, but we, some of our um, we've seen on some early engagements just running the cables in the wrong way can make it so the air can't dissipate in the proper way. You get overheating sure. inside the rack. The heat rises up. Guess what's at the top of that rack? It's your networking switch. The net, the net, you know, networking switch overheats, and so it's. It's those little details of making sure the cables are routed correctly, the right type of cables are in use, you have the proper airflow inside the rack and between the racks, you have the breakdown of the, the hot and the cold aisles. All of that is, is, is really important. Even if you're using liquid cooling, all of that is still important. A lot of folks agree at this stage of development in AI, 
that we've transcended the sort of GPU, CPU era, frankly, and we're really in the connectivity era because connectivity plays such a critical role in connecting these devices together. If these devices aren't connected together, they are worthless. The folks that build these devices might disagree with me. Uh, definitely the folks that provide networking and networking services like Matt and his team at Dell Technologies, I think they would nod their heads. But it is obviously critically important to get the network done correctly at the start, because as you add and build out and grow your clusters, the network can potentially be your bottleneck. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Dave Nicholson with 6.5 on the road. Stay tuned for continuing coverage from Supercomputing 2024.